Hello again, everybody. Mark Spencer from Neo Weather with another update on our weekend storm that could be significant for portions of the country as we head through Saturday and Sunday. And we're going to take a look at a couple different models again real quick. And then at the end of the video, we have a first look at a snowfall forecast. We don't want to put too much stock in the numbers just yet, but we got a lot of people asking, how much snow are we going to get? So we're going to take our best guess at it at this point. Uh, using what we have, the numbers will change here over the next day or two. So don't take these numbers to the bank just yet. They will change. They could go either way, up or down. So let's take a look at the GFS or the American model first. It's not too different than what we showed you the other day. The track did go a little bit further south. We expected that. It's possible it could come back a little bit further north here over the next day or two. It's possible it could go a little bit further south, although that uh, may not necessarily be the case, but it's certainly not out of the realm of a possibility. Uh, so let's take a look here at Friday evening. Plenty of moisture from this system coming in off the uh, west coast of the United States. We got our deepening low pressure system off the front range of the Rockies. We're going to see some decent snow across South Dakota in the Iowa just from this bit of moisture right here. And then as we animate this here in a second, you're going to see this load dive south and then come up to the northeast and pick up a ton of moisture off the Gulf. And that's going to mean heavy snow for some, heavy rain for others, and even some freezing rain in there for parts of the Ohio Valley. So let's go ahead and animate this, and you'll see just that. Here's our low diving south, picking up all that moisture, and then kind of coming up a little bit south of the Ohio Valley there. We are going to see some freezing rain potential from Indianapolis to Columbus to Pittsburgh, perhaps, along I-70, and then plenty of big interior snow for um, New England, rain for the coast. Uh, some of the big cities, New York, Boston, you'll see some backside snow uh, done maybe on the order of three or four inches or so. And then as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday next week, could we do it again? Eh, a little too soon to tell. Right now, I don't think so, but we will see some snow. This system is going to work a little bit differently than the uh, one we're going to see this weekend. Something else we haven't talked about too much with this system is the cold temperatures that are going to follow and also some of the wind. Winds are really going to get strong as the system starts moving out. We're talking 20 to 30 miles an hour at times. That's going to create some blowing and drifting snow. It's also going to reduce visibility. So we'll say blizzard-like conditions, although they won't be true blizzard conditions. It will be like that, where you're going to have low visibility for periods of time, but not long stretches of times, and you will have some blowing and drifting the snow to deal with as well. Also, the cold. So this is going to be the same exact model animation. I left the uh, areas of high and low pressure on the, the isobars, if you will, and added in the temperatures here at the surface. And as we animate this, you can see the cold air up here in Canada really start to seep down behind this system. There's that warm air it picks up out of the Gulf. And here comes the cold air into the Great Lakes and much of interior New England. When we get here Monday morning, these are temperatures across Ohio below zero. Uh, as we get up into upstate New York, we're talking well below zero, 10, 15 degrees below zero, not wind chill, air temperature. And look how close these isobars are, very close. So that means some strong winds out of the north. It's going to really feel cold. Wind chills could be easily below 20 below, if not worse up there. And even here in Ohio, where the winds will be calmer, we'll still deal with a little bit of a wind chill as well. So plenty of cold air coming in behind this system uh, that's going to be with us for a good part of next week, actually. It will start to moderate some, but it is going to be much colder than we have seen so far uh, this winter across a good portion of the eastern United States. Let's also take a look at the European model. This will not include temperature, but we're going to take a look at the storm track and generally what it's showing. So we showed a, a similar map here on Monday, and we're going to kind of do it again here. It's going to look a little bit different. So let's start with the storm track. So on Monday, we actually had the low pressure system up over here uh, in the Oklahoma and northern Texas panhandle. It's now down here. Uh, more towards uh, Childress, Texas. And then it takes a dive south Saturday morning right over Texarkana. Previously, we had this up over Little Rock. By Saturday afternoon, it's near Knoxville. Sunday morning, just a little west of Martinsburg, West Virginia. And then by Sunday evening, it's actually off the coast of uh, Cape Cod, whereas previously we had it actually off the coast of Maine. Uh, so some difference in track. It's definitely further south. It definitely doesn't really uh, get moving to the northeast until a little bit later um, than it did previously. So this has implications on exactly where some of the heavier snow will fall. 
let's take a look at that now. Now, these are just estimates of where it, the snow could be significant. There's no numbers on this map. Um, it, it's very, very broad because it could really be anywhere within this location. Uh, so let's start with the heaviest snow up into interior New England, uh, Maine, Vermont, upstate New York. You know, there's places up there that'll probably be well over a foot. I think that's pretty safe to say in the mountains, you're probably gonna see well over a foot. Um, and we're gonna see our heavy snow zone in here somewhere. Uh, it will have to get refined over a couple of days. I think if, if this particular one holds up or it goes a little bit further south even, this heavy snow zone will come south across Ohio, across parts of central and southern Ohio, and it'll be very, very narrow. And then that'll eventually widen as it gets closer to the coast. We'll also shift everything a little bit east. And the snowfall amounts may not be as high either. So that's what we have here in the bright pink and the purple. We're talking moderate amounts of snow uh, for much of uh, Iowa, down in the portions of uh, Indiana, Illinois, central Missouri, and even down towards parts of uh, uh, eastern Kansas and northeastern Oklahoma as well. And then we have light snow here outside of that in the lighter blues where we're looking at lesser amounts of snowfall. Will be a nice sharp cut off to the north there um, as uh, the system does move through according to this model. And I do think that is going to hold true. There's very strong high pressure over Canada that will create a tight snowfall gradient uh, across the northern edge of this system. Now, I want to show you this map that we put out in our video on Monday, if you remember. Uh, this was our snowfall impact from then. Significant snow possible in the pink, moderate snowfall possible here in the blue. Now let's take a look at our snowfall forecast and you'll see, you know what, we really weren't all that far off from that from a couple days ago. There's decent consistency. However, we refined it a little bit more because we're adding some numbers to the map here. So in the pink, we have this up here where we're going to see our highest snowfall totals more likely at this point in time from far northeastern Ohio on up into interior New England. Easily a foot plus of snow in spots as you get in towards the mountains, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and the Maine, a foot may be the minimum. We may be one to two feet in spots in the mountains there. I think that's pretty safe to say at this point, but that's not going to be widespread throughout that area. But I do think we are going to see a good potential for foot plus snowfall in there. Whether that's isolated or widespread, still too soon to tell. As we get into the purple area and along the coast, this gets a little tricky to draw, so uh, don't, don't mind this too much. Don't take it to the bank, because near the coast, you're definitely going to see mainly rain, followed by just a little bit of snow. But uh, from uh, you know, near New York City, down towards Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Columbus, down towards Indianapolis, Dave as well up towards Cleveland and perhaps Detroit, still a little uncertain up here, six to as much as 12 inches of snow is possible. Uh, along the I-70 corridor from Indianapolis to Pittsburgh down towards the Ohio River Valley where we have this nice dash line there, some freezing rain is certainly possible in that area. I don't think we're looking at heavy accumulations at this time. I think we're looking at uh, around 10th of an inch or so it, that could change here over the next 24 hours. That's a tricky forecast at this point in time. Uh, that'll cut down on some of the snowfall total. However, behind that Saturday night into early Sunday, uh, we are looking at some decent snowfall even moving through that area. So you'd end up with a light layer of ice followed by snowfall on top of that. Uh, back into parts of the western Great Lakes and Midwest, we're looking at about three to six inches of snow for Chicago, much of Illinois, and even down into the lower Ohio Valley and parts of Arkansas as well. Uh, for Iowa, we're looking at three to six for much of the state, except the northern part. We could see six to as much as 12 up here with that initial snowfall moving, and that's a good bit of moisture. And I do think with the cold air in place, we'll easily see six plus inches widespread across much of South Dakota and into northern Iowa as well. Again, don't take these numbers to the bank. Don't put too much uh, emphasis on the numbers at the moment. They are going to change a little bit over the next 24 to 36 hours. If you're one of our clients, you're going to receive your storm analysis here starting this evening and tomorrow on Thursday, and it's going to have a much better look at your area locally and what we're thinking at that time. Again, that could change a little bit, and it's very likely that it's going to differ from this video a little bit. This is a much more uh, national view here. It's kind of tough to get very, very specific. At the same time, 
forecast confidence right now about medium at the moment uh, due to the differences in track and how things are kind of coming together at this point in time. I do expect that to increase here over the next day or so as uh, the picture really begins to come together uh, by Thursday afternoon. Stay tuned. We'll have further updates as this storm gets closer.